Introduction to Neural Networks for Java, Class 2, Part 3. Welcome to Class 2, Part 3. In this part, you're going to learn how to create a Java weight matrix, or any sort of matrix. You'll see the code that the matrix class uses to actually initialize itself from an array of values, and you're going to see uh, several different ways that you can actually construct one of these matrices. It is important to understand how the matrices are created because this is used throughout the book. Matrices are very important to neural network programming. Before you can do anything with a weight matrix, you must construct the weight matrix. There are several ways that the matrix class provided in this course allows you to construct it. One that you see here is using the simple rows and columns constructor of the matrix class. Here we are constructing a matrix that has three rows and two columns. The first parameter of the constructor specifies the number of rows. The second constructor specifies the number of columns. This matrix will initially be initialized to all zeros, as you see here. As you can see, this matrix is all zeros. However, just because it is created with all zeros, it does not need to remain this way throughout its life. As you saw in part one of this class, there are other methods available on the matrix class that allow you to change the values of the matrix even after it has been created. Of course, there are also constructors available that allow you to create a matrix that has its values already initialized to certain numbers rather than initializing everything to zero like you see here. Here you see a matrix that is being initialized to actual numbers. It has three columns and two rows. However, you'll notice that a two-dimensional array named matrix data is being constructed that holds a two-dimensional array of a matrix. This is, however, just a simple Java two-dimensional array. Next, a matrix class is created that makes use of this two-dimensional array. The new matrix named matrix is initialized to hold the values that were passed in on this two-dimensional array. This is how you can quickly create a matrix that has the values that you need to specify. This code results in the following matrix being created. As you can see, this matrix contains the same values that were expressed in the previous two-dimensional array. Sometimes you will not want to create a matrix that has both rows and columns. Sometimes only a single row or column is sufficient. In these cases, you want to be able to create the matrix with a one-dimensional array rather than having to create a extra dimension in your array. This is very useful for input to neurons because the neural input will come in as a single dimensional array. Here we see how to create a row matrix. You can see that the matrix data variable is initialized to contain four numbers. This is a simple one-dimensional array. Then the create row matrix, which is a static function of the matrix class, is called that creates a matrix that contains a single row but has enough columns to hold all of the numbers that you see above. This matrix can then be used just like any other matrix. A row or a column matrix is not a specific type. It is just a matrix that has that number. And here you can see the row matrix that was created by the previous code. It is just a simple matrix like any other, however it has only one row. It is also possible to create a column matrix. A column matrix has only one column and multiple rows. It extends for that column. Here you see a simple one-dimensional Java array being used to create a column matrix. Column matrix is created very similar to a row matrix. You call the create column matrix static function that is available on the matrix class. This will create a column matrix. And here you see the column matrix. This column matrix was created by the previous code. As you can see, it has one single column and multiple rows. This concludes part three. In the next part, you're going to learn how to use matrix functions to actually manipulate the matrices. You will learn such concepts as dot products and matrix multiplication. These are very important for neural network programming. We hope you will continue with the next part. Thank you. 
This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.